required by local stuff in Utah outdoors. Is there any other inspiration that you draw from when you you know design stuff for this brewery, whether it's labels, recipes? Um, where, where do you get that inspiration? That's a great question. God, it really is what drives me. I think you know. Um, I'm a brewer at heart, but uh, I don't really brew beer today, you know, or in the last three years, is the honest truth. I haven't brewed a ship brew at Uinta Brewing. Yeah. But the creativity of making the recipes, working with the designer on labels and a redesign, we're going through a redesign right now, which will be rolling in the end of August. It's, uh, it's, I guess, just that's what I like, the creativity, primarily the recipe development and bringing that from our pilot system to our production and getting that to the consumer is, is a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. Is it kind of like, though, um, like composing music and you write the notes out and you just kind of know what they already know what it sounds like? Is that what it is when you're doing these recipes now? Like, you don't even have to, you just start envisioning it and you're putting it together? Sort of. You know, I, I have people ask me this, where did you come up with that? And I say... Oh, it's been in my head for a long time. I just haven't put it on paper. You guys haven't, have you done any sours yet? We have, yeah. We've done some sour mash, and we've done a, we're working on a free, fruit uh, sour beer right now called Birthday Soup. Birthday Soup. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be really strong. It's not, no, it's only going to be about 7%. Well, how's that going to induce someone to get into their birthday suit? I don't get it. <laughs> well, after a couple of bottles. <laughs> <laughs> No, we think if it's uh, really strong, then it doesn't really lend to the character of the fruit and the sourness. Sour beers don't lend to very strong. Yeah. You know, five to seven is probably pretty good. Yeah. So when I just, when the time's right, it's it's great. Like the Crooked Line, I had been wanting to do that for a long time, and I just wanted to make beers. A lot of people like to make beers under style guidelines, and I didn't want to make beer all the time under style guidelines. So that's where crooked came from, the word crooked or the name, cool. to try to, what you call, you know, as you're a kid, you know, color inside the lines. Well, I don't want to color yeah. inside the lines anymore. I want to brew outside the lines. And that's what crooked's about. It's, it is a newer thing in Utah to see these high point experimental type beers. Yep. Um, instead of having a bottle of wine with your meal, you could have one of these high point beers share that with everybody you know you know pair it with the food um what why not that's why we bit, did the big bottles the big 750 a beautiful bottle where are they do you have one of those no you want me to run upstairs <laughs> and grab i mean the idea down? of it is the share bottle where you're it's a cork in a cage bottle it's a nice bottle it's seven to eight dollars all the way up to fourteen dollars a bottle it's right in the wine market. You know, I don't, I have a lot, I don't really spend more than 20 bucks for a bottle of wine. I think that uh, I can do a good job at $20 or below. Yeah. I mean, I love a $100 bottle of wine, but I think sometimes when you can get the value at 20, <laughs> you're doing better. But anyway, the share bottle, what we have in the Crooked Line, it allows you to do that and have that enjoyment. Plus, if it's much more dynamic in pairing with foods. Yeah. If, uh, do you apply the same law for beer? Is it a twenty dollar limit on a bottle? I don't have that. I've paid no. I've paid more than that for a beer, bottle of beer. <laughs> so you drank a bottle of Utopias. Of what? Uh, Utopias from. Uh, oh, uh, I have. I haven't bought one, but I've drank the Utopia. Yeah. That's even better. That's better not to buy. Um, <laughs> but no, I've bought bottles of beer over the twenty dollars. I don't have that that rule with beer because it doesn't doesn't happen a lot. I think it will more, hopefully. Yeah. I went to Washington, D.C. and, and accepted our, our, our award from the Environmental Protection Agency. But we're not the first. We're the second uh, brewery in the nation, the United States, to be wind-powered, 100% wind-powered. And New Belgium would be the first. Now, did they inspire you, or is it more of a, no, it actually a childhood became, vision? No, it's not a childhood vision. It was uh, something that was happening at the time, and we were allowed to do that. And it was kind of the same timing as what was happening in Colorado. So uh, it was about a year apart. Anyway, so we went for that and became 100% wind-powered. And we, until 
in a week and a half or so, we will not be 100% wind powered because we are going to be 15% solar powered. We've invested in solar panels that are being install installed on the roof as we speak. Has that caused at all the powers that be to soften the Zion fist on you? <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're, uh, we're not really on the environmental radar for them. <laughs> they, they seem to want more studies about uh, environmental stewardship. Yeah.